Good news. This week, GM has announced they will finally stop selling your driving data to insurance companies. And while that is good news, it opened up a lot of questions like, wait, that was actually happening? GM was selling my driving data to insurance companies? What kind of data are they collecting? And is my internet browser history even safe? There's such a thing as search history? Uh-oh. Well, I hate to break it to you, but your car is spying on you. That Chevy is a spy. Yes! All automakers have built a side hustle out of data brokering your driving habits. In fact, 84% of all auto manufacturers sell or share your personal data. And there's no way to opt out, at least with 92% of automakers. And with murky oversight, there's really no telling how secure any of your private driving data is. But let's take it back. You see, 20 years ago, a car was really just a car, you know, a machine that got you from point A to point B, albeit with a C, a uh, somewhat okay sound system, and if you were very lucky, heated seats. But today, cars are more like computers on wheels. There's cameras on cameras, sensors, microphones, accelerometers, GPS chips, and the like. And in many ways, it's great. Now, even I can parallel park like a pro. But all those gadgets are collecting data, big data, which your car uses to do things like tell you when it's time to bring it into service or how many miles you can drive on a quarter tank of gas. But there is a lot of data, data like, do you speed? How often? Do you use blinkers when changing lanes? Especially you BMW drivers out there. How often you're hitting up the Taco Bell drive-thru instead of hitting up the gym like you told your wife. All this data is collected and uploaded to your automaker. And in a tech-fueled world, this data is very valuable. So while it is nice for them to have it to identify a potential issue with your transmission that can be fixed in a recall or even just a software update, it's also a way for your automaker to make even more money on you and me. So you remember Mozilla Firefox? Yeah, the web browser your tech savvy friends liked the best in 2008? Well now, Mozilla is one of the biggest data privacy advocates. They track how your data is used by companies and they discovered automakers are just about the worst data abusers of any industry around. They found that if you drive a modern car, well, you basically have zero privacy. Companies like Nissan have it baked right into their user agreement. You know, that 100-page legal document that you don't even read except you just hit agree at the bottom and go on with your life? Yeah, you really should read those. But thankfully, there's tech nerds like Mozilla that have read it and discovered Nissan has the right to collect and share your sexual activity, health diagnosis, and genetic information. They can sell this data along with your consumer profile, reflecting your preferences, characteristics, psychological trends, predispositions, behavior, attitudes, intelligence, abilities, and aptitudes. Sounds scary, right? Well, yeah, it should. And while you might think all they have is your driving habits, how could they possibly get your health data, genetic information, and sexual activity? Well, it's this. And don't think my phone's huge to make up for my small data plan. See, if you're like me or basically anyone else who listens to music or uses Google Maps in their car, and you use either Android or Apple CarPlay, well, that's basically like opening Pandora's box in terms of giving automakers your private info. Your contacts, text messages, apps, and yes, even your internet browsing history is linked directly to your car every time that you plug it in or you connect it wirelessly. And hey, if you don't care because it allows automakers to provide a better service that caters more directly to you, well, hey, that's, that's cool. But what's not cool is that all this data opens you to incredible risks. For one, almost all automakers will offer this data to law enforcement or government agencies upon request. So while you might require a warrant for the police to check your cell phone, all they'd need to do to get every detail of your location history, your driving habits, and the like is an email request to the automaker. Heck, with how technological cars are these days, some lawmakers are even proposing the ability for the government to remotely control your cars, like preventing them from speeding or have an auto kill feature in case you're involved in a police chase. Some banks and lenders are already taking advantage of cars' connectivity to block your car from starting if you're late on a payment. And scarier than law enforcement or lenders getting their hands on this data is the opportunity it presents for hackers to get in and mine your personal info. Or worse, some kind of cyber attack that could make our cars completely inoperable. I wonder how my insurance would deal with that. Would I have to pay a deductible? Although, it turns out that hackers are less likely to expose customer driving data than automakers are likely to accidentally expose it themselves. 
Anyways, yes, we are all living in this scary, brave new world of tech-focused cars, but it wasn't always this way. Your car collecting data from you isn't necessarily new, and historically, it wasn't always nefarious or bad. You see, when Trav worked at Audi... All right, listen. In the world of modern automotive diagnostics, it's all about having the right tools, and maybe more importantly, the right information. Modern cars are like a rolling network of communicating computers, and as a diagnostic specialist, I have access to scan tools that unlock a treasure trove of data, far beyond basic trouble codes. It's somewhat of a pay-to-play situation where a high-end scan tool will find any stored codes and display operational conditions at the moment the code was set. For example, your airbag control module is the closest thing to a black box your car has. See, when a crash is detected and the airbags are deployed, critical information about the vehicle is stored. Things like your speed, brake input, seatbelt buckle status, and much, much more. That information can be critical for helping law enforcement understand why and how an accident occurred. But everything from your steering, to your door locks, to your engine, battery, transmission, from driving style to driving conditions, your car is constantly monitoring and logging all sorts of information. And that data can be invaluable for the guy like me that has to diagnose and fix the car when things go wrong. Like Brad said, engineers can use that data to identify and prepare fixes for things, sometimes before you had any idea something was going wrong. When I worked for Audi, it happened all the time. A car would come in for routine service, and it would get flagged with a so-called service action, usually in the form of a software update that would be performed free of charge, and half the time without the owner having any idea of what was being updated or changed. But this wasn't tied to your personal info or bought and sold. It was just a way for techs like him to help fix your vehicle. Not to mention OnStar. That was the darling bit of kit from GM that allowed first responders to remotely assist you if you were involved in an accident. They could even cut the engine remotely if they detected you were in an accident and were knocked unconscious. But it looks like the days of the private data are long gone. So, what are you supposed to do if you want a car but still want some level of privacy from big companies? Well, I guess long live the NA Miata. There is not enough tech in it to rat on you for speeding. Heck, I don't even think it could go fast enough to hit the speed limit. But seriously, any car from the mid-2000s or older might just have enough tech to keep you secure, but not enough to be hacked. But those cars will eventually all die out. So, do we have to accept this? I hope not. Maybe we can opt out of data collection or ask the automakers to disconnect uploading our personal and private info to their servers. And hey, if you ask Tesla, they'll tell you, sure. You can take it in to have data collecting features removed from your car, only it might also just break your car and you won't be able to drive it. So long-term, it doesn't seem like any of this is slowing down or going away. Heck, even if you drive a 1968 Ford Mustang California Special from now till the end of time, as long as you have your big old cell phone on you, data about all your behavior is getting uploaded anyways. Ultimately, there might not be a whole lot that we can do. I'm hoping at least we'll have the option to opt out if I so choose with automakers. And you know, without disabling the actual car so I can't drive it. And ultimately, the reason to make this video is to at least make you aware that when you get behind the wheel, you have zero privacy, even with your tinted windows. Anyways, I'm Brad, this is Ideal, and if you thought this was an interesting video, well, throw us a like and a sub and turn on that notification bell if you're new. Also, check out what YouTube recommends over here, and we'll see you next week. Oh, and promise me one thing, keep living the Ideal lifestyle.